This is Charlie Foskett, Chair of the Finance Committee. Um, I will shortly take the role to confirm that all the members uh, expect that the meeting are here. But first, let me uh, just discuss some points about the uh, remote meeting rules. The open meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee is being conducted by remotely, uh, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. We have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings, and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirements of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public, of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, um, <clears throat> allows bo public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as regional public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. That access is, has been provided. Um, insurance, ensuring uh, public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment only in writing by email to tbradley at town.arlington.ma.us.com. This meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee is convening by the Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that the meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take, that, and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Supporting materials have been provided, members of this body, and are also available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda and after they include their remarks, the chair will seek the comments by each of the members by name if uh, the sub designated. Please hold um, any of your comments until uh, your name is called. Let me mention that um, due to the scope or ability to see 21 people at one time on the screen. Um, if you fear you're not being recognized by the chair, please speak up. Um, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you aren't speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call. At this point, I will take the, the, the roll call of attendance by precinct. Um, <clears throat> Grant Gibbion? Here. Here. Shane Blundell? Here. John Ellis? Here. Kaya Healy? Here. Brian Beck? Arif Badaria? Here. Sophie Migliazzo? Here. Jonathan Wallach? Here. Shailene Crawford Prokris? Shailene? Daryl Harmer? Here. Annie LaCourt? Here. Alan Jones? Here. George Koser? Here. Bill Keller? Here. Al Tosti? Here. Wanda Nascimento? Here. Christine Deschler? Here. Dean Carmen is not here. David McKenna? Here. Thank you. So, uh, for the record, uh, precinct, somebody may have their microphone not muted or speaker too loud. Um, Shailene is absent. There's no one here from Precinct 7. We don't have a member. And Dean Carmen is attending a seventh grade concert tonight, which I consider very important. And Brian Beck is, is away. So um, tonight at 8.15, we will be fortunate to have in attendance Town Manager um, Chapelaine. Deputy Town Manager uh, Sandy Pooler and Financial Analyst Julie Wayman to discuss uh, the Town Manager's budget and to launch our review process. 
let me mention that <clears throat> you should have received uh, today, um, or perhaps yesterday, from from Tara, uh, two documents. One is a, a sort of a description of different questions about the budgets and changes in um, and comments made by the manager's department. And, and, um, and the second is the, the actual expenditures by different departments taken from the MUNIS program for the past, uh, three, I believe it's three years. I think this is gonna be very helpful as we move forward to uh, analyze the budgets. And some of it may inform our um, discussions on the budgets that we started um, on Monday evening. So I think that is, uh, is quite, um, th that those two documents are gonna be quite beneficial. Um, Tara, we have the minutes from June 23rd, 2021. Uh, I believe that you distributed minutes from um, Monday night. Uh, there are a number of comments. So I think we'll take the uh, Monday night's minutes up next Monday night after you've uh, had a chance to uh, incorporate uh, those suggested changes. I have um, I have incorporated the changes from Al Tosi, but I have not received um, comments from others. Did did others have comments on that? Probably haven't had a chance to look at it. Yeah, I think let's uh, let's leave those, that, those okay. Monday until Monday night. And if and if you could possibly get the uh, the draft minutes out and and then the revised minutes for Monday night, um, perhaps by by Friday or Saturday, the yep. members chance to um, look at them before Monday night. Okay. Um, so has everyone received the minutes from June 23rd? Are there any comments, questions, changes, edits? Um, there's a motion is in order to accept the minutes as presented. So moved. Second. Did someone make a motion? Someone seconded? Yes. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Um, any further discussion on the minutes of June 23rd, 2021? Let me take the roll. Grant? Here. No, yeah, I'm not, sorry. Um, oh. Not the roll, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Uh, I. Sapp Shane? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Yes. Micaiah? Yeah. Yes. Arif? Yes. Sophie? How do I not vote? Because <laughs> I wasn't. Saying, okay. Jonathan? <laughs> yes. Yes. Shailene's not here. Daryl? Yes. Uh, Annie? Yes. Al, uh, Al Jones? Yes. George? Yes. Bill? Keller? Uh, yes. And uh, Altasi? Yes. Uh, Wanda? Oh, I abstain. Uh, Christine? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Dean is not here. And Dave, Dave McKenna? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the minutes are approved uh, with two abstentions. So uh, before we proceed um, further, let me ask, uh, I noticed that uh, Ms. Hartman is on, Sean Keene is on, are there any other uh, guests? Those are the only two guests so far. Okay, so you have, you have those names recorded, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> so what, I, what I'm gonna propose here is that we pick up uh, the discussion on the budget reviews that we had uh, been undertaking uh, last week at when we turn, uh, adjourned the meeting at 10 o'clock. And we will um, put, put those on the table when the town manager is ready to, to meet with us at 8.15, the town manager and his team. And then if we haven't finished by 8.15, we'll pick those up again. And we will also, uh, I would like to review the um, budget discussion schedule that uh, Tara sent out to you the other the other day, uh, which I apparently tried to send out and somehow or another when I was confidently thinking that I had sent it out, nobody had received it. 
And for some reason, uh, it wasn't in my outbox, it wasn't in my inbox, it wasn't in my draft box. It, it seemed to disappear into the ether. So I apologize for that. Um, so I think we were on the human services budget. Is that correct? Um, yes. Yeah, health, health and human services. Health and human services, yes. Do you want me to push it up? Yes, would you please? And while we're doing this, I'd like to make a general request. I thought this, uh, the budget explainer was very useful, I thought. Um, and what I'd like to request everybody, um, usually when there are significant changes in the budget from year to year, I like to put a footnote into the report to town meeting to you know, sort of highlight changes. Um, so I'd like to get input from everybody when they're doing their budgets. If you, if you see something that deserves a footnote, you know, please, please let, let me know. I don't want to do that uh, single-handedly. For example, the town manager's compensation, there's a pretty significant thing there that I think should be footnoted. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm just asking everybody to uh, help me with that. We will do our best. Thank you, mm -hmm. Alan. So um, let me just re refresh your memory as to what we're trying to do going through this budget. Uh, mm -hmm. The, the idea is to ask the people responsible for doing the departments with the budget to, to raise any questions you would like to have them uh, follow up with as, as they proceed uh, on their tasks. Um, it's not the intention to try to get the answer to these questions this evening. Uh, this is just to, to sort of help create the, uh, the atmosphere where we have treated any of the or at least discuss any of the issues that are on people's minds without necessarily uh, having all the answers uh, this evening. So Andy, um, this is your budget, right? Yeah, so this is Health and Human Services. Yeah. Um, I already know what my questions are, but I would entertain questions from everybody else. So do we have questions from for Andy on Health and Human Services? Um, uh, Al and then John. Okay. Um, obviously one question pops up is, uh, how did, why did the offsets double, mm -hmm. more double and the salaries and wages are up substantially, I think because they've added a new person. Mm -hmm. Anything else? And uh, why did we add a new person? Okay. Um, John? Uh, this department always seems to get lots of grants or be working on grants. And I'd be interested to hear about what grants they've won and what grants they are hoping to win to offset some of their costs. Okay. Anybody else? Alan? Alan Jones. Um, there was a note in the explainer about using ARPA funds uh, for, I believe, two positions, and there's a you know $222,000 offset from ARPA. So you know, I guess the question is, what happens when the ARPA funds run out? Got it. So um, just one question here. Um, so it looks... It, do you, Andy, do you read this as when we talk about the salaries here? Mm -hmm. I, I think um, sort of when you're addressing um, Tassi's question, mm -hmm. I think you should be looking at the bottom line on uh, page 137 because yes. that comes after the offsets that Al Jones just mentioned. That may have some mm -hmm. bearing. Um, yeah, there's yeah. there's some complications here with increases and then offsets and ARPA funds. I mean, everybody's hitting all the things that were already on my mind, right. but um, let's see if there's anything else. Al, are you raising your hand for a second time? Oh, sorry. And Alan, same question. Okay. Shall we move on to the next budget, Al? Mm -hmm. Okay. This Veteran services. Anything here? I mean, it looks like they're totally flat, which for me is already a question. Um, <laughs> well, 
there's a question that I, I'm not sure when this shows up, Annie, but I, I would, if you could okay. do the state reimbursement that we get for these veteran services. Yeah, that should show up on the cherry sheet, but I will double check it and be ready to talk to it. Okay, thank you. Anything else on veteran services? It's Shane. Uh, yep. okay. and, it, and I think I've already mentioned this once, just curious sort of what their outreach is to veterans in Arlington, just sort of where that's baked into the, the number at all. Just less, less a finance question, but just want to make sure they're identifying veterans and eligible veterans for, for help. I can frame that as a financial question. All right. I'll find out. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody Other else? questions on veteran services? Okay, next budget. Council on aging. Questions? Well, one question I have, it looks to me like the salaries have gone up um, significantly in that department. We ought to find out why. Yeah, if you scroll to the next page, I think similarly here, we have some kind of an offset. So I think it's again, a question of offsets, grants, new positions. Well, there's still, it goes from, even with the offsets, it looks like it's going from 328 to 378. So there is a jump there if I'm reading that correctly. Any other questions? Okay, next, next uh, budget. Diversity, equity, inclusion. Mm -hmm. So here, here's an 81% increase in salaries. How do we look? Well, wait a minute, 81%? Scroll back, Alan, and let me see the top line. Okay, there's something not right there. Well, it's going from 103 to 187, right? So that's 80. That's oh, I see what you're saying, yeah, okay, okay. Huh. All right. And and and, it, and again, it, there may be it may be an ARPA issue. So um, it goes back to Al Jones' question about what we're doing with the ARPA money. Okay. Okay. Next budget. So I think the next thing we're into. Oh, all right. You want to do the budgets? You don't want to jump to the. Um... No, we'll just take it in sequence here. Okay. So the, this is uh, pensions, retirement, autopsy. Yep. Any questions? I've got one, Al. I mean, just as always, I, I want to understand um, how close we're getting to covering, whether we're ahead or behind the schedule that was planned on, you know, sort of a actual position versus planned position at this point in terms of fully funding? So, Al, I think if you remember, uh, I don't know if you were at the Long Range Planning Committee meeting two meetings ago, but, um, <clears throat> the town manager did have a meeting with um, the uh, retirement board, or maybe it was Julie Wyman, I'm not sure, but somebody had a meeting with the retirement board and they um, agreed to, um, cut the growth rate back. I believe it was previously at 6%. It went back to five or five and a half. Yep. And there is also available the, um, the, the um, actuarial report that came out. I think it came out in December. So, oh, so this was an actuary year? Uh, we have an act, they have a report every year. Yeah, but don't, don't we only talk to a consultant Every couple of years, do we really do? Um, it's like a reassessment every few years, I think. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer. We'll, we'll, we'll get a hold of the most recent. Uh, you'll notice the non-contrib one person yeah. uh, still hanging on. <laughs> yes. Again, I think we should watch our language around that, Mr. Tosti. <laughs> 
We still well, have I, one person. I think, I think we, we long ago, Annie, we long ago agreed that that was a somewhat um, somewhat uh, uh, macabre subject. subject. And, yeah. uh, but nonetheless, we had to treat, treat it every year. So in, there is one person who was employed by the town prior to 1939 that's still in that, um, that non-contributory pension plan. And that person, um, no doubt, is, is hanging on and probably is in excess of 100 years old. So, Or their spouse. Or their spouse, right. So in any event, it's an interesting demographic. Okay. Uh, next uh, budget, please. Insurance. This is also uh, uh, Al or Bill Keller. Uh, so, so question, questions on, on the insurance budget. I'll raise my hand. Who's his hand? It's a Shane. It's Shane. Okay, go ahead, um, Shane. I, actually, and I might pose this to the manager later, but you know, six point one five is it's a big increase of a big number. Um, I don't know how much we can do as a town to address that number, but um, just curious what we're doing. Well, to, well to... keep in mind, you know, these are only projections at this time. Uh, Bill, if I remember correctly. They don't get the final numbers until sometime in early March. And uh, then they they work with them and we don't meet with them until like mid-March. Is that correct, Bill? Uh, that is correct. Uh, typically they get the new insurance rates by the middle of March and we schedule uh, the meeting by the middle or the third week in March. To Thank you. And, and, and actually it looks like a whole different page when, uh, when they, uh, state the uh, the new budget, the new um, insurance rates. So, but any questions you have, I'll make uh, copious notes. Yeah, no, I guess. I mean, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, six percent is, is a big number. I'm just curious what like and the, 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 and the numbers. The numbers are a function of both the number of employees that are in the plan, uh, whether they're single uh, individual membership plans or whether they're family plans. And uh, and it also um, is a, is affected by the the rates set by GIC. So there's there's three or four yeah. complicated factors um, yeah. there, which will, as Bill says, we will find out later. Any yeah, other? Just, that's just what I'm curious about. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, Wanda has a question, and I have a question. Charlie. Wanda. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess I wanted to know why workers' comp is zero increase, because I would usually rates for that go up as well sometimes. And then the, in things like the group life insurance, is it? I mean the group insurance, um, six percent. I mean I I do I've been getting renewals for a few years now, and late, mm -hmm. it was around fifteen for some places, and. But, but during the pandemic, actually, the rates went down because people were not going to the hospital for a year. I didn't know if we, as a town, does the town get to go out to bid for these things? Or is this like a sole source? You can never change your provider. Well, kind of thing? we used to be, we used to be um, self-insured. And oh, uh, yeah. about, about 10 years ago, the town went on to what's known as the GIC. It's a state group health insurance platform. Mm -hmm. and, and there are multiple plans in that platform that and we have a handful that the town takes advantage of. And um, the employees can choose among those plans. So the insurance can be a function, as I mentioned a second ago, can be, I don't know, you know, whether the rates have gone up uh, from GIC or whether um, we have more employees, perhaps uh, in, you know, maybe in the school department or something to that effect. Um, or uh, people have chosen more expensive plans. Mm -hmm. we, ha we have to wait until we get the final data for that. And do we get data about the plans and the, like, the, Every, the contributions? that goes into it, yes. Yeah. 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 You, you'll be happy. You can stay awake at night going through every last... <laughs> We'll have you. We'll have more data than War and Peace, believe me. But actually, there's about 18 to 20 pages of very good data that uh, they yeah. provide. 
that will give uh, back up and meaning to uh, some of these line items, as you'll see. Okay, I'd be interested in that because okay. you know that's I do that, and we've been shrinking the network, meaning like eliminating very expensive hospitals and focusing on more affordable ones, and that brought our rate down to zero. Actually, I know it, people don't like that because they have to change providers sometimes, but. Well, one thing that I've heard over and over, just to throw in a little uh, thought here, is that um, over the years, a big consideration uh, is that the town of Arlington provides very well for its um, employees. And one of the ways they provide well for the employees is with the uh, health insurance. And uh, as you'll see, they provide a large proportion of the premium, and uh, as such, employees tend to go to the better plans uh, because right. they become more affordable. But we can get more into that when that budget come, when the budget comes up. Okay. Also, these, uh, in general, um, and Annie, maybe you have recall the uh, a better insight to this, mm -hmm. than, but, uh, you know, in the private sector, it's possible perhaps to shrink the network, mm -hmm. but these uh, we, we have, um, most of our employees are in various unions. So these benefits become a subject of uh, labor negotiations, not something that can be easily, not, I'm not saying that it should be easily changed, but, but I'm just saying that, that is, it's a complication. Yeah, I mean, I can, I, I both have a question and I can speak to a couple of things that might give some context here. So the first thing is that um, health insurance was an item that we had to negotiate for most of the history of the town. We negotiated not just um, how much of the premium would be paid by the town and how much by the union members, but also plan design. So we negotiated every detail of who was paying what in those plans, um, co-pays, um, so on and so forth. And uh, so that negotiation process was very fraught. The state changed the law to allow us to, if it was gonna be efficacious for both us and the unions to enter into um, uh, the GIC, they changed that law maybe 2012. And so we are now members of the GIC, which means the unions can no longer negotiate plan design. Plan design is dictated by the state. And the state has a very large number of people, both state employees and municipal employees, in their group and so they can force good rates from the insurance companies. Historically, a 6.12% increase in our health insurance is somewhere in the middle. We have been as high as 11 or 12% increases in the years before we went into the GIC and we've been as low as three or 4% while we've been in the GIC. So this is somewhere in the middle of that. Um, but within the GIC, we can't do any of the things that I think Wanda was talking about. One of the factors that affects all of this, I believe, and it may show up in Bill's data, is what's known as medical inflation. And that is the rate at which medical costs are going up. It's like a separate inflation rate. And it affects what the insurance companies uh, are willing to um, do in any one given plan. So- Okay, uh, well, we can discuss that when we get to that budget. I think, uh, Annie, that's very, very helpful. Um, any other questions with, with respect to the uh, insurance budget? Okay, next budget. Reserve fund. Al Tassi. Any questions on the reserve fund? Does anybody, uh, let me ask uh, Sophie and Wanda, do you have an idea what this is? Much. Um, the only question I had was why the reserve. We, we lost your voice. We lost your All right. All right, the only question I had was why the, why the school, the reserve fund for school, went to zero, but I'm not sure I know yet. Uh, well, it's it's pretty straightforward. Um, 
the student, the student, it was a reserve for growth in students. There was no, no growth in students. Any other questions? Okay, moving on. Enterprise funds. All right. Water and sewer. Anybody have questions about the grant giving on the water and sewer enterprise fund? My only question oh. is how grant can stand to do this every year. <laughs> Tendency or something. Questions? Okay, move on. <laughs> so, uh, with, uh, if there aren't any questions, I'd like to ask the board for a motion to approve the budget. No, we're not. <laughs> Doesn't mean there won't be questions, Grant. All Recreation. Right. Recreation. All right, this one's mine again. Oh, on, no okay. Questions. Any questions on the? Uh, any questions you'd like Annie to pursue on the? Uh, Recreation Enterprise Fund. Annie and Wanda. No Show questions. the totals. One, one thing I think, uh, Annie, that we want to know on all these funds mm -hmm. is we want to know the balances at the end of the last fiscal year, the Got fund it. balance. Got it. Okay. Any other questions? Ed Burns Arena. Questions? No questions. Moving on. Council on Aging Transportation. Does this fall under Chris Giorgiano? Um, I believe so, but I will double check with her. That's one of this one of those things. I haven't had a chance to talk to Mary Margaret. I don't know if she talks to the sub leaders of the sections of the budget or she just talks to Christine. So I'll okay. find out. Next budget. Arlington Youth AYCC. Mm -hmm. So in all of these um, uh, enterprise fund budgets, um, I think a, an interesting number, Annie, that you yep. and Wanda, that we should always check on is this, a transfer from other funds. That's basically the town subsidy for the enterprise fund. And if, it's, if, that, if that is zero, no, it's the one above that, at 49.72, yeah. If that's a, if that's zero, that means the fund is self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. So that's a, you know we should be tracking the growth in that and or or, or shrinkage or whatever and try mm -hmm. to understand what's what the implications are. Yep. Okay. Any questions for um, Arlington Youth Counseling Center? Enterprise fund. Okay. Moving on. Aha. Capital budget. Um, uh. We have a member of the capital planning committee on the committee here. Any any questions for Jonathan Wallach? I suppose one one question I would have is uh, what did we have to cut out in order to afford the uh, DPW project? Mm -hmm. Good question. Okay. Any other questions? This is only a what is it? The ten million dollar budget? No questions. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to read the whole thing yet, but um, I'll email if I have questions that I think are gonna. Oh, John's got a question. I had a question on the Gibbs School drainage repairs. Uh, why, why wouldn't that part be under some kind of contract or warranty? I, I, you know, we sign these contracts for for contractor at risk. Um, but it doesn't look like they were at risk if, if the town is paying for drainage repairs on a school that's three years old. Okay, any other questions? All right, I think that takes us through the budgets. Is that right, uh, Alan? 
Yeah. Okay. So um, this is a this is a trial of trying to go through this early review as um, suggested by John Ellis um, early last year or early this year. Any um, any comments on whether it's been helpful or useful or should we do it again or not? Well, it's been helpful for me because now I know what questions to ask. I mean, in addition to the ones I already had on my plate. Yeah. I don't think we really know until we get through the budget process. I, I well, that's think true. I, that's I think true. I skipped over water and sewer. How many, in other words, how many cycle, how many cycles do we have to go through to get back to a department manager in each department? But I think it should be helpful is my gut feeling. So, and it-, it I, th I think it has been. I think it's gonna be useful uh, also in our discussion with the town manager. So. Yes, yes, I think it'd be very useful when the people had comments on the budgets, that would be very useful, but they seem to skip over the water and sewer budget, but, but it could be a very helpful process. I'm hoping next time that people had a little more questions about it. I'm sure there will be questions upon presentation. Okay. So we a few minutes before um, the manager will be here and his, his team will be here. So let me uh, jump to this uh, draft schedule. I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen here. Let's see what do I do with that. So. How come I don't have a screen share button? Mm -hmm. you, you don't see the green one in the middle at the bottom? I got it, I got it. It was okay. being hidden. Microsoft was hiding it. Um, oh, and this is Zoom. I'm used to something else. Um, Me unshare it. So this is. Uh, I want to put it up, Charlie. Yeah, you want to put that up? That that would be good. I, for some reason, it's not showing on my. I have it open. But you, why don't you put it up? I'll unshare. Okay. Th thank you. Okay, so we have yet to put the Warren articles in, in here, but my thought was that um, to try to get some. Um, some great um, predictability in when we were going to have budgets. So I um, went through and tried to make some informed judgments about when we might have uh, budget information. And um, so I guess what I'm looking for is feedback from the committee on, on uh, whether or not these target dates are reasonable and whether um, we can try to follow that schedule. We, you have to also remember that we will overlay with this um, warrant articles once we get the we get the warrant, and, and I'm hoping that we get the warrant next week. Um, so let me open it up for discussion. Any thoughts or comments here, uh, Charlie? If I could, yes, David. Uh, I noticed that uh, with Sophie and I are first up on the, on the budgets, um, we cannot make, meet that February 7th um, date for our budget. However, uh, next week we have meetings with Bobbin Heads on February 8th, February 9th, and February 10th. The only budget that we could possibly do next Monday night would be the finance committee budget. Um, it takes a little time to line up the, the, the there's seven different people that, that we have to line up uh, for the budgets, but we will have it all done by the end of next week. Okay, so, um... so you, so the end of next week is, is uh, you're talking about the 10th or the 11th? Right, our last meetings with, with department heads 
It will be on February 10th. We have two on, on February 8th, two on February uh, 9th, and two on February 10th. Uh, which includes all, all, all that we're responsible for, which is selecting so clerks. Can we can we do which can we do the uh, the budgets on uh, fe February 9th that you have, which would be for the six budgets? Uh, if on February 9th, we would have available would be the um, clerks budget, including the, the board of registrars, the election budget, and the, and the select board's budget would be ready for the 9th. Okay, so okay. let's put that and, on tonight. and the finance committee and the finance committee. Okay, right. All right. Uh, moving to the next, um, Micaiah, do you think you might be ready on the on the ninth, or or would it take longer? Um, I will put in a call tomorrow morning to um, our lovely friend Karen Malloy, um, and see if she is. Yeah, I mean it's a. It's a two-party dance, so um, I will. I'll see if I can make that happen for for us for Wednesday, February 9th, um, and I'll have a confirmation to you um, one way or the other, Charlie. I'll send an email, and then on Monday, I guess I can. Verbally okay, let's. So then, let's. Out. I'm going to leave it on the 9th, Okay, and if it has to get changed, it will get changed. Perfect. Um, Yes, Charlie. I just want to let you know that um, the um, three town manager office folks are here. Okay, so let's okay. stop there at at, um, at the reclass budget line, and we'll pop back into this discussion after we hear from um, town manager Chap Chaplain and the team. So, where are they? I see, I see Sandy Pooler, I see Adam Chaplain, I see Julie Wyman, Wayman. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Chaplain, I'm gonna turn the meeting over to you and uh, you and Sandy and Julie can have the floor. Thank you very much for agreeing to come tonight. And I also especially wanna thank Julie for sending out those two very helpful documents uh, yesterday. I think they'll be a, a big assistance to the finance committee this year. Great, thank you. Thank you, Chair Foskett, and good to see everybody tonight. Um, I feel like I say this in a lot of places. I wish we were all sitting in a room together, but uh, be be better safe at this point, and hopefully we'll all be back in a room together soon. Adam, can I just, as before you launch, uh, I'd like to just introduce you to, you know Sophie Migliazzo from Town Meeting? I do, yep. And uh, Wanda Nascimento uh, is also a new member on our committee, so there are two new members, and um, uh, Peter Howard, John Dice, and um, Mary Margaret Franklin have retired. So um, we have two new outstanding members, and we are in the process of trying to recruit a third. So great, great. Good to see you, Sophie. Nice to meet you, Wanda. Go ahead, Adam. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. So uh, I'm getting a little feedback. Are you hearing feedback? Let me. Uh... Is that any better? Okay, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I did to fix it, but um, so we we'd like to do I think really three main things tonight. One is provide you with a fairly detailed overview of the town's long range financial plan. Um, given that we're at the start of this budget year, there are some new members here, and we're in the last year of the current long range plan. So I'll talk a little bit about it and then let Sandy get into the details about that. Moving from there, um, I wanna give a fairly brief overview of the FY23 budget proposal, which you'll all be considering department by department. And then I'm gonna have Julie talk about those documents that Charlie just mentioned uh, from a technical point of view, um, sharing with you what, what's contained in there and how we're hoping that they'll be helpful for you as you review your budgets. So I would start by saying um, for, for the better part of almost 20 years now, the town has utilized a long range planning model. And though I wasn't here when it started, um, my understanding is 
it was formed based around a common understanding of the town's structural deficit in that its revenues do not grow fast enough uh, to meet up with its expenditures. And that's primarily driven by the fact that the town is five and a half square miles that is nearly completely built out with limited new tax revenue growth. Uh, obviously more complicated than just that, but that really is the top line description of the structural deficit. So what the town has done, again, for those, you know, nearly a 20 year period, is manage its finances through a series of long range plans, usually somewhere between three to five years in each iteration and ask the voters for operating overrides to support those long range plans. This really all started back in 2004, 2005, leading to successful operating override in 2005, another one in 2011, and then actually an eight year period leading to another one in 2019, which put together a long range plan that was projected to last for FYs uh, 2021, 22, and 23. So FY 23, the budget year that we're working towards for July 1st would be the last year of that long range plan. And overall, the long range plan, as you'll see when Sandy starts to describe it, is it's, it's, it's detailed in its, um, you know, in its many lines, but overarchingly, it is a model that conservatively estimates revenues and controls discretionary expenditures. And then I would say responsibly projects non-discretionary expenditures like pension obligations, health insurance costs, uh, and to some degree capital costs, although capital costs are capped as a percentage of overall revenue of the town. And through that model, we have a high degree of predictability and often have outperformed our projections based on conservatively uh, estimating revenue and having a pretty solid grasp on where our expenditures are gonna be, are going to be because of the controls that we've put in place. So with that, I, I'll let Sandy, um, if he has permissions and it's okay, share his screen to go over the long range plan. I think if it's okay with you, Mr. Chairman, maybe we'll take questions after the long range plan, then talk about the budget, um, maybe take questions and then talk about uh, Julie's documentation, if that's okay. I, I agree with that. Okay, great. All right, so with that, I will ask Sandy to talk in detail about the plan. There we go. Good evening, everybody. It's nice to see you all. Uh, I'm going to be going through uh, the long range plan, as Adam mentioned. Uh, it is in your um, budget books on page 11 of your big blue book. Um, and um, I think the first thing I'm going to say about it is that since we published it in that document, it has changed, but um, that's not unusual for long range plans. They are living documents, they change over time and, um, and they're meant to. Um, what we try to look at is our revenue, uh, certain uh, fundamental core costs such as school budget and the town budget, um, capital costs, and then a bunch of things that are other. The long range plan goes out over a number of years. We always start with the current year budget, FY22. And as I talk about this, I'm gonna make it bigger because I know it's a little bit hard to see these things on the screen. We always start with FY22. This is our current uh, fiscal year. FY23 is the fiscal year we're going into. So we show the fiscal year, we show the dollar and percentage changes and we go out through several years like that. The other thing that is uh, important well, at the bottom of this are two sets of numbers um, that are really key. One is the balance. We, we like nice round, black zeros. Those are good numbers for us because it means that we have a budget that's in balance. Like a lot of 
financial plans, a lot of forecasts you'll see across the state. In the future, you start to see big, ugly, red numbers that are in parentheses. Those are negative numbers. That means we have deficits. So that is a key thing to keep in mind uh, as you're looking at this document. The other thing I just wanna point out from the very beginning is this number down here that says annual and projected, uh, actual and projected annual school growth. Um, over the last few years, we have had uh, a strange history of enrollment uh, growth in our uh, school system. For the last 10 years, Arlington has been the fastest growing school district uh, of any medium or large size uh, school district in the state. Uh, I think we are number two actually, only behind Nantucket. Um, during COVID, of course, as many of you know, we had a decline in school enrollment. And so um, we did not make an adjustment in this plan for that decline in enrollment in FY22, but we did make a decline in FY23 of 189 students. That is the difference between where our enrollment is today and where it had been at its peak a couple of years ago. So they're down 189 students um, from a couple of years ago. And then they are projecting to continue to go up 46 more students next year, 33 the year after and so forth. Um, I just wanted to point these things out at the very beginning because all the detail I am gonna go over in a minute, a lot of it is driven by these numbers at the very bottom. <clears throat> all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend a few minutes really talking about what the long range plan looks like. I know for some of you, you've seen this and this will be repetition. Uh, for those of you who are new to the committee, I think it's important to understand these numbers um, and I hope it to be a little bit of a refresher for everybody else. Um, I would say in general, for all cities and towns across the state, there are four main areas of revenue. There's local taxes, local receipts, state aid, and uh, is somewhat hard to define or varies a lot from town to town other. This plan captures those things and adds a few little more details. Uh, and I'm gonna go through that just now, but kind of keep in mind, basically there are four big buckets that we, uh, we have. Um, I'm gonna, we start up top with state aid and um, state aid is made up of two very important elements. One is the amount we get from the state for our schools called chapter 70 aid. And then the amount we get for sort of everything else, which is called unrestricted general government aid or sometimes referred to as UGA. Uh, it used to be referred to as lottery aid, um, but they changed the name a few years ago and just called it UGA in hope of finding the worst possible name for any kind of state aid you could possibly find. Um, in this plan, we uh, have estimated that state aid is gonna go up about 1% a year. It's a conservative estimate. Um, we have fortunately in the past done better than that, but in this plan, we tend to be conservative uh, with our estimates, particularly the estimates we don't control. And we do not control state aid, the state controls that. Um, the second element down here is sort of new and unique to this forecast. And that is called ARPA. Uh, that is, stands for the American Recovery Plan Act, or American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, it's federal money. It's uh, a source of one-time cash that the feds have given us. They've given the town of Arlington a total of $35 million in this ARPA aid. Uh, we can use as much as $10 million of that aid to make up for the revenue that we've lost over time because of COVID. 
And you can see in this plan, we put $5 million in the plan in FY23 and $5 million in the plan in FY24. After that, it goes away again. Uh, but these are sort of fillers and they're kind of a, a one-time unique uh, and very different kind of aid. Local receipts are all the things that uh, you write a check to the town for other than your taxes or your water bill or anything like that. So uh, it's your motor vehicle excise tax is by far and away the largest in this category. Um, if you take out a permit to uh, renovate your house or if you get a parking ticket or if you eat in a restaurant or you stay in a hotel, all of which I would encourage you to do um, to increase revenue if you wanna really be a good citizen here. Um, I think the important thing to understand about local receipts is we monitor them very carefully. Uh, we, I look at them on a monthly basis. We do a quarterly report that goes to the select board and to the finance committee, uh, uh, as I say, every quarter. Uh, and then um, of course, we have it all reviewed at the end of the year to see what our totals were and to look at trends. Um, local receipts are going up a little bit more than they have in the past because we had to lower them a lot uh, during the pandemic, pandemic starting FY21. So we are slowly increasing what we think we're gonna get from um, motor vehicle excise taxes, which are it's our bigger, biggest source. Um, we go up and I think last year, we assumed that we were gonna get 85% of our previous high in those taxes. And this year up, we're up at 90, next year we're up at 95, and then we'll kind of be back on track to our, our previous motor vehicle excise taxes. Most of the other local receipts uh, are much smaller in comparison. There are some that are highly variable with the economy, such as meals tax and hotel taxes and interest rates. Uh, all those things are things that we had to lower and have been brought back up over time uh, to reflect their recovery. Um, and so you see that in the total here. The next thing is free cash, which fits into the category that I would call other. Um, free cash is basically the town's operating surplus at the end of the year. How much money we have in the bank, uh, kind of on an operating basis, where we have taken in more revenue than we've estimated, because we always try to estimate a little bit low, because we know that we use free cash in the budget, we need to create a certain amount every year. So we need to be a little bit conservative. So there's the re excess revenue over and above our estimates. Then there's the difference between how much we've actually spent in a year versus how much we've budgeted to spend in a year. And there's always a, some kind of gap there. There are gaps because there are vacancies or um, so there's gaps in salaries. There's gaps in um, our health insurance, again, because when there are vacancies, you don't have to pay for health insurance for everybody during the year. Uh, and then sometimes departments, um, just don't spend all their budget uh, for whatever reason. Um, and uh, we get a certain number of turnbacks from them. Um, every year, we take half of that operating surplus and we put it into the operating budget as a revenue source. And then we basically hold on to the other half for emergencies. The biggest emergency of which would be if we had a really bad snow and ice year and we completely exceeded our other reserves for cleaning up snow, we might have to go into free cash. Uh, but uh, free cash is, as I say, one of those other sources. If you look on this sheet, each year, the amount in fr of free cash is half of the number at the bottom of the sheet where we show what our actual free cash numbers are. And then going into the future, we do a 10-year average of what our free cash has been and we use half of that. Um, this next one is overlay reserve surplus. It's a fairly minor amount. It's what the assessors give us back after we give them money in what's called the overlay. That's a fund that they have to keep in case people file for abatements on their taxes and 
um, the assessors have to have a pot of money to give people refunds on their taxes if we've um, assessed them too highly. And at the end of the year, they usually have a certain amount of money left over and they give that back to us as, uh, and we use it in the budget. I'm gonna skip, well, the next one I, I will say is property tax. That is far and away our biggest source. I think 78% of our operating revenue comes from our property taxes. We're very highly dependent on property taxes here in Arlington. Um, this number includes the base levy, which is the amount that is in there uh, just to go into the operating budget to pay for all the department's uh, operating budgets. It also includes the amount that is in there for overrides. Uh, those are overrides uh, for things like the high school. Uh, there's also an override to pay for the, the Minuteman the Regional Technical Vocational School. And there are still some overrides for repairs to various elementary uh, and middle schools over the years. Um, those are getting paid off so that they come out of the tax base eventually. Um, but uh, you can see sometimes this number goes up more, uh, more sporadically depending on if we voted an override for a capital project. Um, that override for capital project then comes out later in the plan. So we then have a net amount of property taxes that goes in. Arlington is one of the first communities to have an override stabilization fund. And a lot of other communities across the state refer to the creation and use of an override stabilization fund as the Arlington plan. It's what Adam talked about before, this realization that we have a structural deficit where our uh, expenses exceed our revenue on a year to year basis. And we need on a, period, on a periodic basis to go back to the taxpayers and ask them to increase their taxes over the limits that are set by Prop two and a half um, so that we uh, can keep up with our, our long-term expenses. Um, when we have an override, uh, we put money into the override stabilization fund. We build it up like a sort of a big piggy bank. And then for a few years, we sort of draw it down uh, until we get to the point that it runs out and then we need another override. Um, so you can see that in this plan. Uh, last year, we needed $6.2 million. We would have needed probably $9.2 million this year except we put $5 million of ARPA money in. So that helps bail us out some. Similarly, next year, we're gonna use $7.5 million from our override stabilization fund. It would have been more like 12.5 million, but we had the ARPA money in there. The next year in 25, we use the last of the override stabilization fund. The piggy bank at that point will be empty and we have to go back to voters and ask them to refill it so that we can continue on. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about overrides and the sizes of those when we wrap up here. Those are the major revenue sources. In fact, those are all the, the revenue sources for the general fund, uh, which is the major budget in the town. There are other funds like water and sewer, recreation, rink, um, AYCC and senior uh, transportation, those are not reflected in the long range plan. This really focuses on um, the general fund. At this point, um, I will ask if there's anything I've said that was sort of confusing or people didn't understand, in which I, case I'd be glad to answer a question. If it's more kind of big picture in terms of the long range plan, I think I would ask people to save those questions till later. Al, I see your hand up. Are you, is your hand up to ask a question? Yes. Um, I noticed the property tax, and I'm sorry if I missed this, is only going up 1.47% for next year. Is that because of the water sewer allocation going back on the fees? Yes. Um, you can see that. I was going to get to that in a minute. But okay. yeah, the short answer is yes. I'll give you a little better explanation in a minute. Okay, thank you. Generally, 
as Al well knows, a lot of people on the finance committee know, generally property taxes go up between about two and a half and 3% a year, sometimes a little higher, depending on how much um, new growth we've had in town. In other words, new growth is that term that is used for something that is taxed this year that we did not tax the previous year. Um, mostly that's because it didn't exist in the previous year. So if you have a house and you build a garage and you never had a garage before, we're now gonna tax you on that garage uh, and you, your, your taxes are gonna go up. Or if, um, if somebody builds a new house on an empty lot or something like that. And there's a certain amount of that in Arlington, although as Adam mentioned, we're a very built out community. So we don't get a lot of new growth every year. So we take in the money and then we spend it. Uh, the biggest part of the budget is the school budget. And um, there are some fundamentals. So I'm gonna go a little out of order here, but uh, general education is the biggest part of the school budget. And we say that that grows by three and a half percent every year. Special education, is the second largest part, and we allow that to grow by 7% a year. Uh, and then some years, when there are new students and there's enrollment growth, there's gonna be a number here, like there is in FY24, when those 46 new st students show up, that represents an increase we give to the school department for their growing enrollment. And every year we take that number, let's say that 335 in FY24, that will then go into the base for general education costs in FY25. Those two together will then multiply by three and a half percent. And so you'll see these numbers are gonna go up more than um, the three and a half percent percentage because you always have new growth. You always have new growth except this year. And this year um, we saw a decline of 189 students. So we, cut the increase to the school budget by an amount to reflect that decrease in of the 189 students. Over the years, there have been different formulas for figuring out how much to calculate this growth factor by. Currently, what we do is we take a look at a number that the state puts out for what it costs to educate a student in Arlington, and we give the school department 50% of that growth. Of the, or that cost as to reflect the growth in enrollment. Uh, we do it as 50% because some things, some costs go up in the schools with more enrollment. You have to hire a certain number of new teachers or buy a certain number of new uh, computers or books or whatever. But uh, as a general matter, you don't have to have all your costs go up. The cost of heating buildings doesn't really change that much with enrollment you don't hire another superintendent because of enrollment growth. So we settled on 50%. These three numbers are then the basic numbers that go into the school budget every year. This five-year plan shows a couple of exceptions. One is that when we had the last override, we promised the voters that we would increase the school budget over four years by $2.8 million. So, uh, because the school department said it needed that over and above its usual growth. Uh, these are the last two years of that growth and they're represented here. This plan that you see in front of you also has an increase of $970,000 uh, to make up uh, for the increased cost that the school department has in FY23 to deal with COVID. Um, we know that there are a number of things, there's um, more, training, there's uh, the, the, some kids just have, uh, you know, they need remedial help with their studies and so forth. Um, and some kids just have certain emotional issues that, that need counseling and so forth. So we recognize that they have sort of a short-term issue here and we put that into the school budget. I've talked a lot about the school budget. I think the important thing for the finance committee to know and to look at is what the long-term trends are in the growth of the school budget, how much it goes up per year. Um, in FY23, under this plan, it's gonna go up 5.42%. If you compare that to our revenue going up 
2.96%, you can see right off the bat, uh, we, that's part of a big part of our structural de deficit. In other words, our school costs consistently go up more uh, than, our, um, than our revenue. In future years, you, I, I would encourage you to take a look at these growth rates and just see how they, uh, how they grow over time. These next few things I'm gonna go through a little more quickly. Um, we're part of the Minuteman uh, Regional Technical Vocational School. Um, they um, charge us a, a fee every year for the students we send to them. Plus they charge us uh, a fee for the capital that we must contribute to that school. Uh, the biggest part of which recently has been that they built a new school, we did an override to, um, to help pay for that, that goes on an increase in everybody's tax bills. It's reflected up here in the property tax number and it's reflected down here. We increase generally the Minuteman budget by the same three and a half percent that the uh, school budget goes up. And then uh, the capital amount goes up according to how much debt they have sold to pay off that new high school. We're now getting pretty close to the end of that increase. They've really sold most of the debt that they're ever gonna sell for that. So we may see a little bit of an increase next year. And after that, this line should smooth out. The town budget uh, is made up of personnel costs, town expenses. We then subtract an amount that we charge the enterprise funds for the amount of work that people like me do to help the enterprise funds. Uh, I think the best example of that is what the treasurer's office does for the enterprise funds. They send out all the bills for the water and sewer department, for example. And um, the water and sewer department could hire a private company to do that and have to pay that fee and have it include that in the water sewer rates. By using the treasurer's department, which is paid for by your tax dollars, uh, we then charge them for the amount of time that the treasurer's office puts toward that. And so at the end of the day, the town budget is a mix of personnel expenses. We subtract the enterprise fund offsets and a few other offsets. And we get the net town budget. The net town budget can go up uh, under this plan three and a quarter percent per year. As you can see in the future, that's what it's projected out to go up. Um, this year, it's going up only 3% because the town manager decided to try to constrain some of our spending by uh, not going up to the full three and a quarter percent. We did the same thing in FY22 when we went up only 2.6% uh, because um, we've really tried to limit the, the number of new positions or new programs that we put into the budget because we know we are facing an override and that things are getting a little tighter. Um, I just have to comment that that amount uh, that we're saving by not going up the full three and a quarter percent isn't going to make the difference between whether we need an override or not. We are um, just a portion of the overall budget, but that is what we've done. And that's why you see 3% this year. Al Tosti asked about the MWRA debt shift. That's a program that the town had where we used to subsidize the water and sewer rates by putting some of them onto the tax bills. The select board voted to get rid of that over a three year period. FY22, the current fiscal year is the last year we did that. We're taking $1.8 million out of uh, the town budget, out of our, our property tax base. That's one reason that property taxes aren't going as much up as much as usual. and that, that after that, it just won't be there anymore. I'm not gonna go through all of the details of the capital plan, except to say um, we have two kinds of debt, exempt debt, which is the overrides that you see on your property bill, non-exempt debt, which is the uh, kind of fundamentally the 5% of the budget that uh, uh, is set by the capital plan, the amount of cash we pay for, pay for capital. We have some offsets and over, uh, carry over, overs of various other monies from other funds like the antenna fund and ambulance fund and so forth that, that then decrease this. To, so we get to a bottom line capital budget, which is again, about 5% of the overall budget. 
We have to pay for pensions for our employees. We have an agreement with our retirement board. Those will go up uh, on average 5.5% per year. It does vary a little bit by year, year to year, depending on uh, how many people we have in the pension plan. Uh, but they, they try to get it pretty close to that. And in the future, you can see it's at 5.5%. Insurance, this is mostly health insurance. That goes up by five and a quarter percent per year, except um, it goes up a little bit more than that when we have enrollment growth. And the reason we have enrollment growth in insurance is mostly because of enrollment growth in the schools. Uh, as they hire more teachers, you see them showing up here. The state gives us a lot of money, but the state also takes away money. This represents uh, what they're taking away, they charge us for things like the MBTA. I mentioned the overlay reserve before. Um, the reserve fund is available to the finance committee. It's 1% of the budget every year um, for things like unforeseen expenses that you can allocate to different departments at the end of the fiscal year. Uh, we have a small reserve in case we have some judgments that we need to pay off at the end of the year. And then for those of you who've been to town meeting, you can see that we have, uh, there are warrant articles, the biggest of which is the amount that we put into OPEB every year, uh, which is the amount a trust fund for the health insurance for retirees. If we have a, a fat year with a lot of extra income, we put money into the override stabilization fund, um, but uh, this is one of those years in the next three years, we have to take money out. Looking at this plan, I would just note, we show how much free cash we have, there's so much how much we have in one of our reserves, which is called the stabilization fund that goes up about $100,000 a year. This is the big fund, the override stabilization fund. And then uh, there's one other small trust fund that uh, doesn't change much. Overall on this plan, we always try to keep our reserves at at least 5% of revenue. It's important for us to maintain our AAA bond rating by maintaining that number. Uh, the rating agencies certainly pay attention to it. We, you can see how it plays out here. So that is the five-year plan as published in this document. Let me just stop for a minute and ask if there are any questions. I have one quick question. Oh, sorry, it's a shame. Okay. Uh, for the... Uh, just going back to the growth factor, when DESI calculates per pupil costs, do they look at pensions and insurance expenses or do they not? Or Yes, they, they have a sheet that no matter how towns budget for that stuff, they could put it in the school budget or not in the school budget, blah, blah, blah. DESI then says, okay, we don't care how you do it on an individual city or town basis. We're gonna look at co costs that are common to all school systems and they include those costs there. Um, I just very quickly want to show you one other thing. If there are other questions, I'm glad to uh, take them, but I told you that the last plan changed. Um, it changed because the governor's budget came out. And in the governor's budget, instead of a 1% increase in, in state aid, we got a 5.9% increase in state aid. So that came out about two weeks after this book was published. So it's not in what you have in your hands, but it will be part of the long range plan that you're considering uh, when you come out with a budget for town meeting. Um, certain other things changed, um, but so fundamentally we're now much closer to a, uh, six million dollar deficit in FY25. And then it goes up to almost 20 million and, and almost 25 million. So where we stand today, we're about in this area. Again, it will change again uh, a little bit as we go forward. There are numbers in this forecast that we need to tweak, particularly when we get our health insurance rates in in March. Uh, various parts of this plan will change. Uh, when the Capital Planning Committee finalizes its capital plan, this number will change a little bit. Um, but I think you know what the town manager and I look at a lot is 
how big the deficits are in the future, how much of an override we would have to have to have to increase our property taxes to get rid of those ugly red numbers, um, and uh, make some guess about in consultation with the finance committee, a select board, school committee, and others. Uh, how much do we think the voters in town would be willing to, to vote for in an override? Um, so that's a long range plan. Again, happy to take any questions at this point from anybody. Well, any questions? You did a really good job, or I really lulled you all into submission. <laughs> They're all everybody's asleep. No, I'm just, I'm just yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I'm not thank you very much. That's a very good, very good presentation. I have a question that was raised uh, to me. We were discussing this the other day with um, our new members, and um, one of the members who happens to be a, one of these people who add things up in her head all the time noticed that um, you, the uh, uh, enterprise fund and other offset in the um, expense section for the net town budget is shown as a positive as opposed to a negative on the um, five-year plan. Is there, yes. is there a, a reason for that or is that somehow a is cultural historical fact? It's just a kind of quirk of the culture of how I got this plan when I came to work for the town six years ago it was a positive number then. I asked that same question. People said, oh, that's just how it is. So I kept doing it. It doesn't mean anything other than you have to well, know. Maybe to we can make it negative, you know, just so it's uh, it puts our um, accounting types at rest. I would be very happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you. So, I, can I ask quickly, um, Sandy, thank you for a wonderful presentation. The Minuteman expenses go up by 19.75% next year, and then they kind of go back to their usual level. Is there a quick reason why they jump for just this next year? Um, they jump so much in FY23 because um, Arlington's enrollment in Minuteman as a proportion of the total uh, school population has gone up pretty significantly, but both because um, Minuteman is just attracting a lot of students. It's very popular. Second, because uh, there are a number of other towns that dropped out of Minuteman. So their students aren't there anymore. Then George, going forward, um, we just have the 3.5% um, assumption in increased cost, but that is, really subject to changes in enrollment. So it could go up more, it could go up less. Um, Minuteman does use a four-year rolling average to look at our enrollment. Um, but as a forecast, we just plug in the 3.5 and then adjust it year to year. Just a quick follow-up. So you are not assuming that we might be capped in the number of students we go to Minuteman. We'll take this up with Minuteman later. I'm just curious what went into the plan. Um, at, Minuteman is always talking about its enrollment and different ways to deal with these things. Uh, so I won't venture to guess what they might do, but it, there's nothing that reflects any idea like that in this plan. So I would, I would jump in, George, uh, if I may, just to, to say, uh, add a few things to that. I, I think we, we are in an interesting time where we have a high school that's under construction. They have a brand new shiny high school. So I think that has driven uh, Arlington's enrollment to some degree. And, and we, I think many predicted that even, you know, five years ago, that, that that always happens. When there's a brand new shiny tech school, more kids go and or when there's a construction project, more kids leave. Um, I think they're working through now really becoming an only in district district. Uh, some of you may remember there was controversy at town meeting last year where they were still accepting out of district students and rejecting some Arlington students. And 
I think they heard that message loud and clear and they're, they're shifting to become an all in district district. But I think what that is going to also do is create a competitive situation where not every child or student from every one of the spending communities, from the member communities, is going to be guaranteed that those kids get in. So how that actually shakes out for Arlington students remains to be seen. I'll, I'll also add, they just hired a new superintendent. Um, and I sat on the screening committee, and that gave me an opportunity to get some deeper insight into some of the things they were thinking about. And they're looking at Oh, they're already looking at expanding the new facility to be able to seat more students based on the demand. So that could put upward pressure on how many students from Arlington attend as well. So I think there's lots of swirling variables that um, frankly make it hard to make any type of truly educated projection about what our enrollment and their buyer costs will look like in the, in the, in the, in the forthcoming years. Thank you, Adam. Uh, Sandy, uh, first of all, thank you for a, a great presentation on the plan, and, and thank you for all of the work you've done on that and, and have done for many years. Um, but I, I would like to observe that um, the, the plan is right now supported um, to a degree by um, one time in uh, Without getting into the details tonight, I would just like to note that I'm hoping that the Finance Committee is going to discuss in a future night the implications of using the uh, one-time income for uh, operating expenses. And I know that you and I have had discussions about this before. Um, and there are, uh, I think, a number of uh, potentially good uses in the town in, in, inside the municipal budget for those one-time funds. And um, well, I just won't get into the details tonight, but I think I, think, I just wanna let you know that um, we will be discussing that in the future. Charlie, if I could just, I don't wanna get into a long discussion either, but I, I think one of the things that's important about the ARPA money, it, it, you are right, it is one-time money but it is also there to replace some one-time revenue losses. Uh, so over the, this year and the last couple of years, because of COVID, our regular revenue numbers went down. The ARPA money basically tries to replace that lost revenue. And I think it does a good job of replacing it for a period of time until that revenue can get back to where it was before. So while I think in general, I would agree very strongly that using one-time money for ongoing expenses is not a good idea. I think that whole structure of ARPA and its design to replace uh, short-term revenue losses somewhat mitigates the, the danger of using one-time money for ongoing expenses. Okay, well, I, I understand that, but you know, we, we'll dig into it a little bit further this, this time. Goes on. Thank you. Sure. So um, I guess the next subject you had, Adam, was the, uh, the discussion of the FY23 budget proposal. Um, Charlie, I noticed Mr. Jeremy, I see and Al both have their hands up, by the way. Who had their hand up? Yeah, Andy Annie Laporte and Al, Al Tosti. Oh, OK. You, you may not oh, know them. I Sorry. think they're new Andy. to me. Andy, go right ahead. OK. Um, I just had a follow up to George's question on the students, students going over to Minuteman. Do we count, presumably when we are calculating the um, growth factor for the Arlington Public Schools, we're not counting students that have transferred to Minuteman as part of the drop in student body, students going to Minuteman instead of Arlington High School, do you think? Um, I so would say... I, I mean, I would jump in to say that they're either in the Arlington School District's enrollment totals or in the Minuteman enrollment totals. One place or the other, not both. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay. Just wanted to check on that. Oh. Yeah, I, um, I'm growing more concerned as we approach 2024 about the override, which can be any place from 
eight to 12, 15% uh, impact on the taxpayer after they're, all, after they're already absorbing uh, a huge impact from Arlington High School. And I, I know there's been some programs um, in, the, uh, in the town budgets, and I assume in the schools, uh, on COVID um, and also on, on other areas. So um, I, I just wanted to know how you're, that you're keeping track of all these so we don't make temporary positions into permanent positions and temporary programs into permanent programs. So we're not asking the taxpayer to uh, uh, come up with more money than, than we really, really, really need. Al, your question is a perfect segue, if I may, to have Julie speak a little bit about the memo that she put out. So um, at some point, Charlie, either now or after Adam talks about the budget, I think Julie's memo would address some of Al's questions. Uh, that's, I'm looking forward to it. So maybe first, Adam, you want to take the budget or you yeah, and, and I will be very brief uh, to talk about the FY23 budget because I know your your hearings over the coming months will dive into much greater detail about the proposed FY23 budget. But I think there was five uh, key points I wanted to hit on. Um, I think the overarching point is that even though, as Sandy described in the long range plan, that the town budget is, uh, as proposed, increasing by 3%, it is almost entirely a level services budget um, with uh, very minor exceptions. Uh, level services meaning that um, we are proposing to fund service levels in FY23 at the same levels as which they were funded in FY22, except it might cost a little bit more to do it based on costs of collective bargaining and some other costs of doing business. So I think overarchingly, that was a point um, I wanted to make about FY23. Um, additionally, uh, Sandy has spoken about ARPA. Uh, Al Tosti just asked a question about ARPA, and I think Julie will talk about ARPA in her memo, but that is a theme of this budget. Um, it's a theme with the proposed revenue use, and it is a theme with uh, several, not very many, but several mostly public health related positions that are proposed to be funded utilizing ARPA uh, for the period of which ARPA is eligible to be utilized. And then I would want to touch on the three areas where you will see, and they're highlighted in the budget message, but three areas where you see proposed uh, increases in spending. The largest one is our recycling and trash contract. Uh, for a number of years, uh, I think here at the Finance Committee, you've heard talk about concern about recycling markets. We're, we were in a 10-year contract with JRM. We're currently in a 10-year contract with JRM that expires on June 30th of this calendar year. In this current contract, we have been paying $0 per ton of recycling. We signed that 10 years ago. That was a fair deal for all. About midway through the contract, recycling markets went haywire with China no longer accepting many recyclables and collapsing the market. Some communities signed deals um, paying up to $100 or maybe even, I think at one point Boston signed a contract paying $120 a ton for their recyclables. In Arlington, we collect on average a year about 6,500 tons of recyclables. So if we, that we, we had concern that if the market didn't stabilize when we were faced with renewal, that we could have a, a very large cost increase for uh, recyclables um, disposal. Fortunately, though um, we had several opportunities over the past couple of years to either extend with JRM or potentially think about going with a different vendor based on proposals that would have provided some cost stability after a large jump, um, we remained patient and patient and patient. And JRM quite recently within the past several months came to us um, sharing with us that the recyclables market had dramatically stabilized and asking us if we would consider extending for a three-year period. In the first year, having it, um, a cost increase 
of 7% above what we had been increasing by, which was a 2% a year inflator. So you'll see in this year, a proposed, I think in the budget book, it's actually 8.97% increase for um, solid waste collection, which is the totality of JRM's both collection and recyclables disposal cost. After that, the next two years of that contract would increase at 2.5% a year. So in any year, we don't want a line item that's approximately $2 million to increase by 9%. It's a far, far better scenario than what we feared and what municipalities across the whole country were facing for a number of years. So you'll see that built in. Um, it is, I think, the largest um, you know, single increase that you'll see in the budget. But again, overall good news for what we thought we might face at this time. Additionally, much smaller in scale, I wanted to mention that last year we had created to assist and work with our diversity, equity, and inclusion director, a administrative staff position to help the director with her day-to-day. -day. We have expanded the hours of that position and upgraded the position to make it an ADA coordinator position, an American with Disabilities Act coordinator position. So it's really the enhancement and expansion of an existing position to provide more professional and technical support to the DEI director. Those administrative tasks that had been performed by the administrative staff working with the DEI director will be now, um, that, that burden will go to existing administrative staff within the Health and Human Services Department so that those needs will still be met for the DEI director. And then finally, you will see the proposal for the creation of one new staff position, which will be a ZBA, full-time ZBA administrator. Um, and I guess in some ways it's actually expansion of hours of a very part-time ZBA administrative position that's existed for some time. But with growing demands on the ZBA, as well as growing applications going before the Arlington Historic uh, Commission, funding uh, a position that could support the ZBA uh, working both with the inspectional services and planning department uh, was really the most needs-based uh, request for funding that we received from all departments. So we are proposing to fund that. Um, what, I'll, what I'll share is that I think many have seen the workload the ZBA has taken on over past years dealing with the Thorntike Place 40B application. There's another series of 40B applications in different periods of town that are expected to come forth over the course of the next several years. So that workload appears to be continuing and we wanna make sure that they do have the staff resources they need. Um, to meet those demands. Those are the points I wanted to touch on for FY23. Um, so why don't I take a pause and then um, answer any questions there might be and then we can have Julie walk through her documentation. So uh, are there any, any questions? Let's try to keep them at a general level and not um, uh, you know, sort of debate the budget at this point. Jonathan. Yeah, Adam, so um, we've been paying zero you said we we're paying zero per ton for recycling with the with our current ten-year contract. Is that correct? Correct. So, is it possible to estimate if we're getting more than a we're getting a big jump next year in in the overall rate? Um, have you worked out effectively what we're now going to be paying for recycling per ton? So the way the contract is proposed, it, it still does not have a tonnage rate for recycling. It's just an overall cost to the town. Um, there's a, they, they also came to us with an opportunity to have sort of a, you know, a win-lose proposition where if cost of recycling went down, we would have lower costs, but if they went up, we'd have to bear them. And ultimately we decided that stability was more preferable to us than risk. Um, from a budgetary point of view, but the way again, the way the way it's currently structured, there there is still no tonnage cost for recyclables. It's a it's a contractual cost that inflates in the first year and then just inflates at um, the two and a half and two and a half for this the second year and third year. I guess uh, my question is, but for recycling, um, would it be reasonable to assume that um, next year would go up at two and a half percent? Um, 
as it will in the following years. And so the, the difference between two and a half percent and the whatever seven or eight percent that it's going up next year is attributable to effectively adding a tonnage charge for recycling. I think they would, you know, I, I think JRM would say that some of it is addressing recycling costs that they have faced over the past several years, mm -hmm. and likely also reinvestment in the equipment they need to serve the community, and probably also um, staff related costs that have changed beyond what they expected when they bid on a contract 10 years ago. I, th I think it's a collective total, but they won't be weighing our recycling and then charging us based on how much they actually collect. Okay, thank you. Of course. Kimmy, did you have your hand up? Well, it's another trash question and I don't know if it fits your general category, Charlie. Um, but, you know, I'm wondering as I am want to wonder, Adam, whether or not you have considered or or done any thought work on switching our trash collection to a pay as you throw model and what the financial implications of that would be and how that would coordinate with the coming override. We have given that a lot of thought. Um, there may be, we still haven't made any final decisions yet. We may come forward with a pretty minor proposal to have bulky items come at a cost uh, instead of the one bulky item free every week for everybody that we currently have now. We're, we're probably one of the last holdouts in the Commonwealth that, you know, does, you know, has, you know, the one free bulky item policy. So that's not pay as you throw, but it is sort of a shift in the current cost model. Um, we have also talked about limiting the amount of barrels. So right now we have the, the three barrels. We've talked about going down to either uh, a two or a one barrel scenario, but we also haven't made any decisions about what we want to bring forward for the board's consideration in the future. I, I do think, I'll just say, I like the barrel limit model, which reduces, you know, likely we would hope reduce cost versus the versus the buy a bag model um, because of our override scenarios here. Um, it just has always felt to me like risking an override for selling bags never never the value proposition was never there for me um but uh, but we have been talking about the various changes to the program itself to try to get at um to get at the actual costs related to it okay thank you you're welcome adam. so adam back to you and julie so i think uh, george just raised his hand uh, charlie just a quick question, quick question on the ZBA position. Uh, conceptually, is it possible to think about uh, changing the permit fees for these 40B and other applications so that we are not implicitly subsidizing impoverished developers who want to do 40B stuff in our in our community? Yes, I think conceptually that is possible. Um, I don't know offhand how we compare to other uh, communities and what their filing fees and application fees might be, but I think that that is something we can look at. Thank you. Of course. Anybody else? Am I missing uh, hands here? I don't see anybody. Thank you, Adam. Charge ahead. All right. So now I will turn it over to Julie, uh, who is the management analyst in the town manager's office, to walk through the documentation that has been referenced several times already tonight. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so I'm gonna dive right in. Um, so as Charlie had mentioned, we provided two uh, reports for all of you. So um, one was a budget explainer. This was um, suggested by a member of the finance committee. So. Um, we put together a document that we wanted to um, highlight some of the changes that you'll notice in the budget. So I'm going to walk through just a couple that I wanted to call out for all of you. Um, so the first is the um, cost of elections. 
So this was something that, um, again, had been brought up as sometimes causing confusion. So we, I wanted to show a little bit of the history um, behind the cost of elections in prior fiscal years. So this is just to explain how you might see fluctuation from year to year um, in the budget for elections. So you can just see that if there's gonna be one election um, in that following fiscal year, uh, you, there's a lower budgeted amount. You can see with three elections, we've got a higher budget. So um, this just explains for all of you why you're gonna see a dramatic difference from year to year in that budget. I also wanted to mention that the election budget is now under the clerk and no longer under uh, the select board. Also uh, wanted to highlight that um, in, the, in the budget, you might notice a couple of positions that um, are not new, but they are uh, fully funded outside of the general fund. So, um, but we wanted to show them and show that, that funding offset. So you'll see this is true in the planning community development department with the CDBG administrator. Um, and it is also true for the um, council on aging uh, transportation coordinator as well. Um, we also wanted to mention that this year we have um, transferred money from the repair and maintenance line in the library, police, and fire budgets into the facilities department. So this is um, continued effort to uh, move that maintenance of our buildings under the facilities department. Um, I also wanted to highlight that you might notice um, fewer lines in the police budget this year. Uh, this is because they have consolidated a number of their budget lines. Um, so we have rolled up uh, prior year expenditures and the um, 23 budget, but it, it will take up a little bit, uh, a little less room on the page than in prior years. And this is why. And then um, the final thing that I wanted to um, touch upon here that um, a couple of other people had mentioned was ARPA funds. So in the budget, you will notice that there are a number of positions and Adam actually called this out in his budget message on page five also, but um, ARPA is covering um, a number of positions in HHS, um, also in our diversity, equity and inclusion division, um, and also some of our clinicians in AYCC. So that's all I really wanted to highlight on that page. Um, but then I also just wanted to quickly talk about the MUNIS report, which um, we provided as supplemental to the budget. So the budget itself um, shows the 21 and 20 actuals. So the expenditures, from each of the divisions or each of, each of our uh, departments for these two prior fiscal years. We sh what you can see is the expenditures in that fiscal year from that year's appropriation. So in 21, natural resources was um, appropriated $335,000 for maintenance. And uh, in, that, in 21, they spent 200,000 of that, of those dollars. Were you though to look at your supplemental report, you'll see that natural resources in 21 had total expenditures of $271,000. So that $70,000 difference um, is the difference of purchase orders, prior year encumbrances from fiscal 20, primarily from fiscal 20. So um, the scenario might be that um, you have work in fiscal 20 that carries over into 21 and then some of those final um, expenditures or invoices are paid using that 20 encumbrance uh, in fiscal 21. So that's what makes up that $70,000 difference. So um, that was just a quick example for all of you. So when you are um, looking, if you are looking at this MUNIS report, that's what you will see. And you'll see it more so in our larger budget. So that's why I chose that DPW example because you know they're one of our larger budgets. So, so you might see some carried over um, expenditures when you're looking at this MUNIS report uh, more often than you would see in some of our smaller departments. And that is all that I'll be highlighting tonight. Thank you, Julie. Um, anybody have any questions about uh, either of these two reports um, for Julie? John Ellis. You're mute, John. Sorry. Um, maybe, maybe I missed it, but 
Um, we already have someone uh, in the town with the uh, title uh, GIS director and systems analyst that's now being added to DPW. So is that a, a new job or a transfer? A little bit of both. So Adam Kurowski is actually no longer uh, an employee of the town. Okay. Um, he left a couple months ago now. He'd been doing part-time work um, for the town, and I think he's going to shift for a, a limited period of time to just doing some contract contract work for the town to do some maintenance to the GIS system. So a few, a few things actually are happening. One, the position that had existed in IT is going to become more of a direct uh, project manager position for various IT initiatives that are being undertaken. And the same classification of systems analyst director of GIS is going to live in DPW um, to be focused primarily on helping DPW modernize its many systems, but also serve uh, as the manager of the town's GIS system for all departments. So in the end, we'll have two tech people instead Correct. of one. Correct. Great. That's terrific. Other questions for Julie or, or the manager or Sandy? I don't see any hands. Sorry, could I just uh, say one thing? I'll be very brief. But um, I know you all know what a great job Julie does on the budget and on the capital planning committee. I don't know that you are aware that in this past year, um, I said to Julie, okay, Julie, the budget's yours this year. I threw her in the water to see if she could swim and she swam wonderfully. So I really wanna credit Julie with putting together this document with working with the departments, with putting together information for me and Adam to uh, review these documents. Uh, but uh, whereas in the past, I would say this was my budget. I think I have to say and congratulate Julie for this being her budget. And so I want you all to know that. Thank you, Sandy. Oh, here, Welcome here. to Budget Wordum. <laughs> Alan Jones. Uh, I, I'm glad to know who did the explainer because as soon as I saw it, I, I thought this is a great document. Um, and as I mentioned to uh, uh, people earlier, uh, I think it's going to generate a lot of footnotes because I think these a lot of these are important points that should be communicated to town meeting as they're reviewing the budget. And I guess I'm assuming that something like this will be integrated into the budget document. Uh, next year, I think it's an, an essential piece of it. So uh, congratulations. Um, I, the budget document looks great and I think it's a great addition to it. So thank you. Thank you. Al Tassi. That's great because that former guy was impossible to deal with. <laughs> uh, Julie, so just so I understand this, in the natural resources, that 200,000 for fiscal 21, that is only 2021 expenditures from the 2021 budget. It doesn't include carryover from 2000. You got that it. That's correct. Thank you. Yeah. Questions? This year, you know, this is uh, the last have to, to really question these people for another three or four weeks. We'll probably be fortunate enough to get them in before the end of the uh, budget process here, but uh, this is, a, this is a good time to ask the tough questions. All right, well, Adam, Sandy, Julie, thank you very much for your time. I know it's late and um, it's always very informative and we appreciate the, uh, the great work you do. And I, and I just uh, would like to add a comment. I think I, I said this uh, independently to Sandy and team a couple of weeks ago. But I think the, the finance department um, output and quality of work um, is, is as good as it's ever been in Arlington. I mean, it's really at the top, top level. We, we, it's been improving every year. We have um, strong people across the board, Julie and Sandy and um, Ida and, and um, 
treasurer. I mean, it's, I think we have a good, a good team and it's, it's a pleasure. Now, now we just have to get the, um, the expenses down, but we'll, we'll worry about that in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> Thank you very much for all your time tonight. Thank you too. Thank you all very much. Good Thank night. You. Take care. Okay, <clears throat> so um, we were talking about the budget schedule. Alan Jones, could you pop that uh, back up, please? Could you expand it a little bit more, please? Uh, other way, Alan. It's Make it bigger, not smaller. <laughs> Good. Okay. Great. So um, I think we, uh, I think that David said that um, he and Sophie were going to have four budgets on the ninth, and Micaiah was going to try to have um, uh, to see if they could have the uh, the recall and and human uh, the recall budget uh, on the ninth, but we'll let us know. Um, and I would assume, uh, David, that the other two budgets we could do on the 14th. Yes, yes. Hopefully, answer to your question is yes. Okay. So then um, that brings us to Annie and Wanda on um, – those budgets and the enterprise funds. What what do you think about that on the 14th, um, Annie? So I'm going to shoot for the 14th. Um, Wanda, I have an email out to you to ask your availability to make to have calls with department heads. Once I know that, Charlie, I will. I'm sorry. Say it again, Wanda. Oh no, I didn't say anything. I didn't get an email though. When did you send that? Uh, late today. So oh. if you I'll don't it. have it by tomorrow morning, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> and I will resend it, or you know, we'll we'll find each other. Yeah. Um, once Wanda and I are lined up, I will get the department heads to tell me their availability, and with luck, I will be able to talk to all of them next week, and we'll be ready for the fourteenth. Okay. Well, yeah. let's leave it there for the time yeah, being. Yeah. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. Daryl and John, what do you think about the community safety on the sixteenth? So I have emails out to Chief Clarity, Chief Kelly, and um, uh, Mike Champa from Inspections. Uh, hopefully, I'll hear back um, tomorrow or Friday. Ask for <clears throat> their avail availability next week. Um, if we can meet with them next week, then um, uh, we should be able to make the 16th. Um, but it really depends on um, their availability. Okay, so um, let's leave it there for the time being and um, hit, go to the fi finance uh, category. Al Tosti, what do you think about uh, the 28th? Uh, keeping in mind that uh, the chair has reduced my staff by 25% uh, and that uh, we can not do the insurance until mid to late March. Um, and Brian Beck is wandering the desert of Arizona as we speak. Uh, we're meeting next week. Uh, so I think we could probably get um, a good chunk of our budgets done uh, by the 28th. Okay. Well, we can't, we can't do the insurance, right? That's um, what, anybody remember what that budget number is? Um, Well, well, let's 20, 20, probably 24, 25. Yeah. Yes. So let's say, let's move the insurance out to the, oops, out to the, um, let's say to the 14th of March. Um, this is Bill Keller here. I think I might be a little bit too soon. I think that uh, uh, probably by that date, that Carol Malloy will have the new, um, the new rates, so she needs time to put together the new budget. We have to meet with her and then present to the committee. So I'd add at least another week to that. 
All right. Um, 21st. We'll aim for the 21st. Yeah. Um, so Arif, uh, on the Minuteman, uh, you've got to organize that with um, the um, superintendent. And, yeah. And, and um, so we'll, let's leave it on the, on the second, but it's going to be dependent upon his availability. So let me ask a clarifying question there, Charlie. So when you put that there on the second, does that does that mean is that the presentation by Ed on the second, or does the presentation have to well, happen prior it, it to depends. that second? <clears throat> well, I don't. If if we can get a budget, I mean, generally speaking, I think in the past we've had um, we've had uh, Ed Boquillon talk to the committee along with the, the CFO. So mm -hmm. that's. I mean, I think you should try to organize that, get the information, et cetera. But. Um, if we're going to try to avoid cycling back and forth, maybe just for the for a big budget like that, get get them to speak to us directly. Okay. No, I, I, again, let me clear. I'm asking a different question, perhaps. But what what I'm saying is, on the second, when you put that there, does that mean that second is when I should ask him to present, or yes. it should be prior to? Okay, got it. That's yes. it. All right. Fair enough. All right. Yeah. On. I mean, Thank but you. it's again, if you know, he might have a school committee meeting that night or something so yeah i don't know i'll try and coordinate yeah i'll okay. shoot for the second but and then uh, meander from there based on it. all okay, right thank you all right and then similarly um christine and george john what does it look like uh, to get the dpw um group of budgets um by the second we can we will certainly try i know that mike rademacher traditionally is um, out of the office during the school vacation week. Um, so we'll have to try to do what we can before he leaves or we'll have to finish up when he gets back. But we can certainly try to aim for that day. Okay. And 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 uh, thank you, Christine. And then um, Jonathan, you've already set the seven for the Capital Planning Committee? Yep. Okay. Well, Cap planning committee is on notice that that's the hearing date. Okay, and and Dean is not here tonight, so I'll separately check with him. Uh, the, the March may March 9th may be too aggressive for the school department. Um, in the past, it's been more in the later half of of um, March, but let's I'll check with Dean and see what what he thinks. Um, so the. Yeah, somebody had a comment. Oh, you'll need to fit in the uh, community preservation. Ah, thank you. You're right. Well, we, yeah, part of the community preservation. There's a whole series of warrant articles and things we're going to have to put in there as well. But I'm just yeah. trying to address the, the budgets. I'm uh, getting those back um, slowly, Charlie. Some of those um, warrant article responses. Okay. I'll, I'll fill you in as I get people who are All looking right. for more money. So, um, so the big biggest change here is insurance budget to the 21st, and uh, we we're adjusting the first set of budgets. So, um, the other thing that's happening on the 9th is, uh, as I mentioned last week, um, Dr. Holman and Mike Mason are going to come and give us a sort of a general overview of the state of the education of the uh, Arlington Public Schools uh, Department. So, uh, and I think that's gonna be very helpful. But, you know, I'm looking forward to, to hearing, hearing what they have to say. It's not gonna be a budget review, review meeting. It's more gonna be uh, to give, give us all an insight as to what's happening to the school department uh, in the context of the COVID problems, what's happened um, with the remote learning process that the kids have had to go through for the last couple of years and how they're dealing with uh, the pressures as, as it's ongoing. Um, so I don't think we have any budgets or anything. Uh, uh, Charlie? Yes. Um, thank you. Um, I know you have great confidence in the- oh, I, I forgot to check on you, I'm didn't sorry. You, didn't you have to check with me? <laughs> 
However, <laughs> however, um, I'm fine with that date yet, as you probably are aware, the insurance um, changes also change water and sewer. So we would. Uh, oh, yes. Vote. Okay. Um, well, Not, then, then I think we should put water and sewer then on the same night as we do insurance, which would be the 21st. Is that good? Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you, Grant. I, uh, I appreciate the confidence. My, <laughs> well, you, you asked for the vote earlier tonight. You want everybody to vote, vote, vote it tonight. So I figured it would be easy. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to cancel uh, the meeting on Monday night because we really don't have any business to address. Is that all right with everybody? Oh, yes. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good. So I think we're getting close to the witching hour here, right? I don't know what time it is. Uh, Charlie, uh, yes. Um, can you just uh, say which Monday night meeting is being canceled? What oh, day? yeah, uh, the second, Monday the, the second. second. Okay, thanks. I'm sorry, you said the seventh. No, the seventh. No, I'm sorry. Um, oh, March 2nd. No, no, no. Time out. Um, I'm minute. sorry, the seventh, the Monday night of the seventh. Next Monday. Next Monday. Okay. The, of February. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I said this. I mean, I meant this seventh. Uh, Charlie, can I'll I publish? I'll publish an, an updated list. Charlie, could I could I make a uh, an informational point? Sure, David. Um, for the folks that, that are unaware, um, the select board and the town manager have. Uh, negotiated and extended the town managers has a new contract and the new contract goes into effect on uh, 2 11 22. So it's a, a brand new, it's a three year contract and there, there has been some changes in, in his present contract, but I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention as of uh, he'll be in a new working contract as of February 11th. Do you know if they're going to ask for a reserve fund transfer? I do not know that, but I will ask that of um, when we meet with the uh, on the manager's budget. I'll, I'll ask that. Okay. Um, yes, I'm sorry. So, more very thank you for catching me on that, um, Tara. Yes, the, the meeting that we're canceling is on the seventh of February, Monday night. Awesome. Thanks. The ninth is will be will be our next meeting. Okay. Um, we what time are we at here? Nine forty. Nine forty. I don't think we have any other business tonight. Um, does anyone? Is there any other business anybody wants to bring up? Then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Exactly. All in favor? I think. Aye. We'll dispense right, with bye. the roll call. Thank you very much. Have a great evening, and we'll see you on Wednesday, February 9th.